And welcome into the interview portion of the pocket here this fine Saturday afternoon. Uh, you're tuning into MCR.watch, Miami Community Radio. Uh, just heard a wonderful live performance from Aiden Finn and Benaya. Um, really in incredible to experience a, a very healing frequency is much needed, definitely for myself personally, and uh, an honor to have uh, live music within this space. For the second time as a part of my program, hoping to do it more frequently uh, moving forward. Uh, but yeah, now just to, to talk about a few things um, with relation to the music and, and life. I guess the first question that either of you can ask, and the same goes for all, or answer, and the same goes for all the uh, other questions, but usually when I interview um, people for the first time, I like to just ask, you know, what's your what's your background? How did you come to the music and be so dedicated to it? Uh, I'd like to kind of hear everyone's story about like how how they came to be within this space as an artist and, and musician. Well, um, I don't know. I guess the way I like perceive it is always different, but it just started when I was young, and I don't know. Like at some point it became like a direct expression of like pain and every emotion. And so that's when I really started following it, I guess. And I know it's the last I kind of remember mostly right now in this state. It's just like, it's a place for me to express. So. Yeah, I can agree with that. Um, for me, it just started when I was young. Um, I gravitated towards music, dancing, singing, every kind of way of expressing. And um, for as long as I can remember, I've always loved to express um, singing first and foremost, and then other ways as I grew up. For sure, yeah. You guys both mentioned expression as it relates to your musicianship. And I guess I'm just curious, was that something that you understood from the beginning or was there a certain point where you became more aware of how you were expressing and, and the fact that you're transmuting these energies through the art, through the music? Or was that something that you kind of felt intuitively from the beginning? Um, for me, I don't think so because, like, I mean, I was always expressing an energy, but it was kind of like it came from where it was coming from and myself, like my current expressions at the time and how I wasn't like more suppressing and like now it's like the road to like letting things like be seen directly and so like when I'm playing music it's not even about the music it's like now it's like it, it, how I feel regularly will come out in the music and vice versa so it's like I'm just trying to go forward to like freeing myself and letting me express all the different like selves that I have and so that that yeah that shifted at a certain point um, and it kept on unfolding for sure I feel I feel those sentiments exactly um for me I was just thinking back to the beginning as well for me it was just always intuitive just to feel music and to sing and to express in that way but I wasn't really thinking of it as any form of like letting something out that I wasn't already letting out it was just something that I loved and it was just intuitive for me to just do it um, now there's more of an awareness and the awareness came later I think where I express and I use these tools that I have as a gift to bring energies out and to heal myself and heal others. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, and, and something that, that I also have struggled with myself as a musician and just curious about that you guys kind of made me think about is as you've developed as musicians and artists and kind of started to gather more of the knowledge that allows you to express yourself more wholly, have you struggled at all with feeling less I don't know exactly how to articulate it, but at least in my experience, when I became more knowledgeable of, you know, 
the the baseline, the, the underpinning of music and more of the theoretical understanding, even not so much theoretical, but just getting more entrenched within music as a creator to a certain extent, at least early on before I started to deal with those things. I felt like I was like the magic was kind of taken away because I didn't think I, I didn't feel things as naturally in some ways as I did before. I was always kind of thinking about, oh, what's happening here? Like the, the analysis kind of happens like um, without me even trying to a certain extent. So it kind of got like frustrating and then I had to open myself up to new music and new things that I had no context for that I could feel more intuitively since I didn't have. And then, you know, I don't know, from, th from there it's still a work in progress, but just trying to have a more kind of like holistic, I guess, um, like conception with regards to art. But yeah, basically just, just that question, like if you guys feel like you've had any difficulties staying connected to like the root and the magic per se as you've become more like skilled as, as musicians. Well, I definitely, um, I definitely feel you on that. Um, and I think I've gone through a whole journey on that. And it's also been like a journey of myself, like finding like where I started from or like where before conceptions came in kind of thing. It was like when I was younger, I would sing to music and I would like really like hear like all this stuff like intuitively, just like it felt so natural. I noticed as like I got older, I started exploring like these different types of conceptions in my mind. Like I lost the ability to intuitively like find my way again. It was like I relied on like external factors. And so it's almost like coming back to that intuition again for me. And yeah, I mean, like, I, I think, like, it was a funny thing, though. Like, it was also fun to, like, learn all the concepts. Um, it started at concepts, and it was, like, a kind of, like, my own personal, like, avoidance of stuff could, like, be put into the energy of, like, learning all these concepts and, like, the things that made me, like, depressed and then put that depression in other places. Like, it went there for a while. And then as things started to develop and I started to like heal more of my personal self, I, I went to the concepts again, but I went even deeper and it started becoming fun. And around that time was when I started really expressing and it was almost like I had the concepts, but it was also intuition. So it was, it was a weird mix. Hmm. And now it's gone back and forth. Like today I felt a little bit too many concepts, whereas, um, what was it like yesterday i didn't i felt more intuition like there was more intuition but it also goes reverse because this morning i felt more intuition mm -hmm. but yesterday i felt more con concepts during the day like mm -hmm. just as a person so it was, it was strange how it worked like that yeah i think it's part of being human um for us to develop in those ways um throughout life we sort of move away from our childhood essence and um, start to be inundated with the concept of life, what we're being taught in our environment. And um, yeah, for me, I totally resonate with both of you. I feel those sentiments as, uh, the same way. Um, but I, I think there are, are valid tools for us as well to uh, remember that essence of why we started and why we're continuing to do it. And it's always comes back to like that childhood essence for me. Um, I was just saying that this morning. I said, uh, the children are the future. <laughs> yeah, we were, we were, we were, like, ma we were like playing and it just became this like beautiful thing. <laughs> and yeah, I remember that, that was so beautiful. The children are the future. Um, and it really feels like that. I feel like when I was a kid, like I, like I could see the future. I felt like I like, like I, all of my innovations was just intuitive and just immediate and there was no thinking it was just there so like i'm trying to remember that essence more than the concepts these days um and trying to just tap into that it's so funny by the way because when we were playing that and you started saying those words i didn't know what you're saying but i felt like a kid in that moment like i I almost thought you were talking about children or something. Cause yeah. I felt like we both felt like kids. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's really interesting. Yeah, that's yeah, that's something that I think about a lot. Like trying to connect with 
those kind of like more pure energies and not thinking about what needs to happen or, or all these, you know, different bits of knowledge and information that we, that we pick up. Not to say that it isn't valuable, but just having some ability to kind of reconnect with, with that. And I think something that helps with that a lot is, uh, at least for me, like, as I've been like teaching and connecting with younger kids, like just seeing that kind of thing in the moment in action has kind of like reminded me like, oh, wow, this exists, you know what I mean? Because you get into your own head and you get into your own communities and everything and you can kind of like kind of forget about it. You still have it in the back of your head, but you don't have like examples of it happening in real time. So that's something that I've been like super super grateful for um but yeah i definitely agree with that 100 percent. like just the importance of keeping that kind of like childlike innocence especially as it relates to to expression and you know not worrying as much not thinking about the judgment as much just mm -hmm. existing in that moment and, and trying to come to terms with with whatever comes out of that um yeah i'm also curious about your guys conception of like improvisation as it relates to music and art um yeah just because i feel like knowing both of you as as musicians and players although i'm still uh, looking forward to absorbing more of your voices to, to understand it deeper um but i just feel like there's a very strong um grasp on expression through like improvisatory techniques um so i'm just curious if that's something that i mean you kind of already spoke to a little a little bit but just to kind of yeah focus in on that like very specifically of how you what your journey has been with improvisation basically mm, for me um for me uh <laughs> it's been sort of like um a back and forth um because of the concepts that I picked up. Um, a lot of the times it causes sort of a, um, a blockage to allow the expression to be as free as it can be. Um, but I notice that I'm most free when there's no restriction, when I allow myself no restriction of what needs to be said or what needs to be felt or what needs to be or any need at all um, when I'm just free and I'm allowed to be as I am then I feel the most of that child essence like I was speaking about before um, but it, it is kind of like a like I'm I'm back and forth with it at times and I have to kind of like fight myself to be more free sometimes, um, but I'm learning to play with that essence more and more. Like even yesterday, an example I can think of is like, I was freestyle, or not freestyling, I was singing a, a jazz piece, um, My Funny Valentine, and um, it's, it's very uncomfortable for me because I'm with all these musicians who are fire, <laughs> and um, they're dope, and I honestly, I'm out of my element in a way, but I just sang it as as best as I could, and I, I, you know, let myself be free. But then I got some criticism that, like, you know, I kind of overstepped the soloist at one point. And honestly, taking that criticism was very easy for me because it came from this person that was just being honest and free and without restriction to let me know that that is something that I should keep in mind. And that is the child essence that I like I feel like when there's no restriction, when there's no like, oh, I don't wanna hurt your feelings or um, I don't want you to feel bad. It's just, it is what it is. And that's the innocence that I wanna tap into more. Yeah. Yeah. What was the question? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> like I like have the like energy on my mind but like I, just, I was like 
I think I got away from the question. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I'm trying to recall exactly what I asked you too. Um, oh yeah, just just your your journey with with improvisation, like kind of, you know, as it relates to. I mean, like I said, you've already spoken to it a little bit, but just to focus in on it, um, as it relates to, you know, you learn these things, you have more of an idea, more of like the framework of how, of how to improvise, how to express yourself. But then, yeah, just that kind of dichotomy of like, you have more language to use, but in some ways, maybe it feels less intuitive depending on how you like got that language or how you how that absorbed into your your repertoire um just with myself it's been kind of i've kind of actively tried not to imitate or like follow any kind of method or a certain type of sound or anything although at the same time i know that ultimately my sound is like collection of all the things that i've absorbed but like doing it in a less intentional way so that I can more easily feel and exp like feel that I'm expressing myself and purely myself and like be that, I guess. Um, but anyway, yeah, all, all that being said, um, yeah, just curious about, about your journey with, with improvisation. Um, cause it's something that I feel like is like very palpable and strong within the way that you like approach the, the music and everything. Yeah, I mean, like, for me, it's hard for me to create a division between anything because it almost feels like my selves are split across, like, everything and their energies kind of, like, collide. And so, like, you know, when I was younger, I would improvise by um, putting up a wall, right? So I would, like, make jokes and all this stuff. And it would kind of be, like, this energy that I would kind of, like, avoid. And then... At a certain point, like, I started playing music and I started doing what you call improvising, you know. Like, I would solo over music and I would do all this stuff. But it was still coming from a place where it was, like, I didn't want them to see these parts of me. Like, I was afraid and I didn't want to open myself up to, like, the multiple selves I had. All the pain and the sadness and um, even the deeper joys that come from that. It was, like, I wanted to put up the wall, whatever the wall showed. But it was, like... I always had the opportunity to go deeper. And once, like, I wasn't seeing anybody, it was COVID. It was, like, I went deeper into myself. And around that time was when I started improvising, um, like, really improvising. It was, like, it felt deep to my soul. And ever since then, I mean, I've been improvising, like, and just the other day, somebody stole my phone and wiped it. And now I have none of those old recordings. And that was actually really sad. But then I realized, like, it's the same thing that I've been faced with recently, which is, like, all these selves that I can remember of myself, like, they still exist. And they just exist in these deeper caverns, like, my uncomfortability when playing. When I go into that and I take, like, an approach with it and I kind of, like, discover that self, I discover my old selves and, like, what they longed for and what they wanted the validation and understanding of. And so... Improvising is like that for me. It's like my multiple selves. And each one has a different thing to say. And each one has like a different intent. Um, some of them feel really bad. Some of them are like, I don't want you to be with this person. Or like, I'm jealous. Or like, all this stuff. And the more and more deeply you go into it, the more like it purifies. Or it naturally like, uh, balances itself out. And you like, you know? And so the improvising is like a journey of that for me. It's like the same as life, like kind of discovering those selves. And yeah, ever since that point, I said where it, it's almost like at that point, my life started unraveling. It was like the natural like ball of yarn, like just like it just started spinning and it just couldn't stop spinning, but it was going at its own pace. It was like not always consistent. Since then, I've been improvising and found beautiful places in my soul that I felt so palpable and real like what we were mentioning earlier this time that we were in tampa and um we came back from the beach and i picked up the guitar and i was playing for like five hours or six hours like no words no words said <laughs> and it was just like the most beautiful thing and i was like i didn't have my pedals i had some like random guitar amp that i had there it was just like 
it was just like really like I just lost myself in that time I didn't even think about my soul it was like I just lost everything and it was very beautiful yeah speaking to to that like when you when you kind of reach those like flow state moments uh, in these like artistic and musical contexts it's it's very mystical to me um, as it relates to existence um, but I guess just to ask you know those kind of moments and experiences that you feel come up in certain times and certain environments have you recognized any patterns in terms of when you know that essence that feeling comes up strongly as it relates to like the environment or the circumstance or the people the energies that you're with for me honestly i mean i think this might be something it's like no it depends on like the set and setting of my own creation of my like own mind like even if something is so dark like I experienced the other day, honestly. Um, even if something is so dark and like deeply, like almost like corrosive and like encapsulates you, it's like you can find a way within yourself to completely like exhaust everything in you. Like absolutely, like let all your feelings come out. And I feel like every time that happens, or like I fully like surrender, it's like I enter the flow state in a way, or I enter a place where it's like every expression feels like even the anger or the sadness like where it comes from every expression feels like right and it feels like it should come out and it feels like beautiful and it almost like it just kind of makes like every every expression okay so like it's like if it was dependent on like factors other than like the internal factor I don't know I guess what I'm saying is like it's not to me because then I wouldn't be able to reach it, you know? Totally agree. Totally agree. Yeah. From my experience as well, um, I haven't, because I've been, like, these, th that's the part of me that I'm trying to learn the most is how to access that state as much as possible. And just from, like, doing my own research and myself, I realized that it doesn't really matter the environment that I'm in but it matters the frequency that I'm vibrating at, at the time, um, and how I feel, like how I'm able to surrender or not. And ultimately, improv, improv, imp improvisation, it can come out of like putting up walls, like Aiden was saying as well. Like I can improvise and still be putting up walls and still feel like I'm not totally free. And I can also improvise and feel the, the surrender and the, the essence of like my nature just coming out of me, flowing effortlessly. And I felt both of those different, those different feelings, um, but I don't know if there is like some kind of code that like allows me to just tap into it other than my frequency and like like really allowing um whatever to be felt um and yeah there's only like specific times that I can even think of where I've felt that and um yeah it, on, it only happens sparingly I, I feel I, like I can't really control it I even like imagine because just earlier, as I said, I kind of felt a little confined. I even just, like, had this imagination where it was, like, I was thinking about how you said, like, you can feel both of them. And I was imagining, like, the what was needed for the energy to somehow, like, be surrendered or to, like, the point where you, you almost exhausted or, like, let that energy become a part of you and you stopped, like, thinking about it and, like, trying to hold on to it. And... I don't know, yeah, I, I think about, like, the term of, like, you can't make the apple ripe, or you can't, like, you can't make something ripe, like, you can't force it off the tree, so, like, is there a choice? Can you, like, maybe the mind can't do that, but, like, is there a way to, like, surrender, like, 
non-conceptually like completely like surrender um of your own will like it's kind of um paradoxical to mm-hmm. say of your own will mm-hmm. you know it's it's a weird thing but i wish i could sometimes there's just times where it's like but i also know like i know why i'm not because i tell myself why i'm not <laughs> <laughs> right right yeah and some other thing another thing that, that kind of came into my head that i feel like is necessary to get to the point where where you're thinking about the music and expression in the in the way that that I feel like you guys are is kind of that that underlying understanding that that life the soul the human experience is connected to music and art in such a deep and tangible way it, it basically they are themselves there's no disconnection between music, frequencies, rhythm, and the way that you're feeling in the moment or whatever, however you're, the way that you articulate it is, is really apt, in my opinion, like the frequency that you're vibrating uh, tells the story of what comes out musically. And if you try to fight it, then there's <laughs> some dissonance there. Fighting is a big, yeah. a big thing for me sometimes. <laughs> and it's interesting because the mind is, mind is such a such a fascinating creature like in some ways it's it's i just think about how impressive it is that you can be expressing yourself to some degree and and creating while still being in this completely different like place in terms of what the actual (laughs) thoughts are happening like it's crazy to me yeah sometimes like i think because i've been in these situations sometimes they felt like artificial or unauthentic but it would be like I play something, I'm like playing, and the whole entire time I'm just like, this is not authentic, this is not right. And I get off, and everybody's like, wow, that was beautiful, that was amazing. And they suddenly like shift the whole entire vibra- vibration all of a sudden. And it makes it to like where I started seeing through their lens, and it was like their vibration was like, it was like, I remember I was playing this show one time with Himalayan Salt. And the whole entire show, I was going through this whole entire journey of my anxiety, of like, what I was afraid of and like shit that like I just I don't know it was like a lot of like like I didn't want to look up like I didn't want to look at the crowd I didn't I didn't even want to be playing in front of people I was just like I don't even want to be here like I don't even know what I'm doing (laughs) but it was like through that feeling and through unleashing that feeling I started every song was a different journey like every song told a different thing even though it was uncomfortable for me at times but I realized when I got off that everybody almost saw that as like art Mm -hmm. i was like it kind of like shifted the view and i felt like alive again but at the time i was like man get me out of here like (laughs) like, (laughs) just playing the music with like exactly that energy i was like it literally like (laughs) like smashing the guitar and stuff and doing stuff i would never do but i was like really like get me out of here (laughs) i I don't really want to be playing right now (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah and that's such an interesting thing too because it's like sometimes in the moment you don't know why something is manifesting the way that it is and, and then it reveals itself to you later and that experience that you've mentioned I've, I've been in a very similar place like that before and it's it's fascinating because it's like the music is deeper than self it's not about it's not about just solely the creator's viewpoint it's about the experience you know the people that are there their their perspective as well and like you said like they can shift that vibration is at a completely different perspective they don't have the full context that that you have within your head and even if like you you know your internal struggle in that moment ultimately served the music in some type of way the way that it needed to in that moment um and then yeah just like you said, they perceive it as an art in and of itself, which I think is really powerful and just speaks back to that kind of idea of like that music and art is kind of the another side of the same coin of, of life and like experience in general. Um, so it's, yeah, it's really interesting to think about. Yeah. That when I'm in situations like that too, like a common thing for me will be like carries a similar vibration to what I was feeling earlier which is like, I'm like looking at the band, I'm like, I don't wanna like disrespect their music. Like, I don't wanna like 
because we've like talked about this show or like or talked about what we're gonna be doing and it's like suddenly like I'm just like bro I'm just gonna like <laughs> I'm just gonna go off my feelings right now and it's like I look around and I'm like like I don't know sometimes I'm, I'm afraid to like cross over the boundary or I imagine a boundary and I'm like you know try not to like earlier I was kind of like oh who are the people watching this? Like, I, what does Phil want me to do? Like, like, <laughs> like, should I, can I be like this right now? Can I, um, and I've been like, oh, but Phil's a pretty, um, Phil's a pretty free guy. Like, I feel like you would understand. But then I was just like, <laughs> yeah, it was like still putting up the wall and I was kind of like afraid to face that self with myself. Like, mm. you know, all the versions I was naturally like manifesting and creating and like my own self boundaries around what I can do and where I should go. You know, I feel it even when I'm by myself. It just doesn't carry the same vibration that I could say it's this person sometimes. Hmm. And I, as I'm like listening to you both speak, I like, I have these like, these uh, thoughts that like, these these uh feelings or um awarenesses that manifest in these moments um are sort of uncontrollable it's not something that i ask for or that i you know can like resist it, it is what it is and it it comes and goes and most of the time i'm like having my awareness fight against it um, and then, you know, afterwards I get some of those experiences where I'm like done with the performance and everybody's like, yeah, you did so good and, and this and that. And I'm just like, nah, like you don't know what was going on in my head the whole time. Like, but, um, I think that those things are inevitable. Those feelings are inevitable. Um, how it manifests is inevitable. Um, and ultimately, it's just part of experiencing as a human and just being aware of it and allowing it to be is something that I want more of rather than like fighting against it. I'd rather just like know it's there and accept it. And that's the part that I like have to work towards, I think. It's hard, too, because, like, I've experienced recently that sometimes, like, um, being, like, in that state means the opposite, almost, like, because it's, like, every time the anxiety comes up, it gives an opportunity to, like, find the self that you're, like, missing, like, yeah. the part of yourself that you're not touching, and it's, like, suddenly once you reopen that door, it's, like, maybe, like, tons of desires that, like, were, like, lost in the ruins, like, suddenly come in, tons of fears, and it's, like, that can be like a really good thing because it's like wow i just reopened this self and it makes me so alive because now i'm getting like another side of the like shape you know that's like reopening and like fizzling again and it was like that was the part that i was so afraid of or like that was putting the walls up to experience but like i didn't know that i actually really wanted that to be opened mm. like you know like when i think about when i'm playing like how I'm afraid to get free sometimes in certain vibrations. And it's like, it has this energy of like freakiness or like, I'm gonna be a freak or like, I'm gonna be like a weirdo. I'm gonna be like, um, make stuff that just doesn't make sense. And that like energy can be opened in a way and certain environments can open it or myself. And it's one that I'm trying to open. Um, so I can like find that because I think it would be liberating hmm. to accept that part of myself and therefore like in every space be okay with that part and other people and myself yeah that's something that I, I reach for as well and it's like one of the main healing things about like the experience of music and creating in general because in my life, yeah, that's something that I that I struggle with so much is like just always thinking about what other people are thinking basically as it relates to like how I'm expressing myself or what I'm saying about something or the way that I'm engaging in a space, which in some ways is a blessing because it allows me to be like hyper 
um, respectful and aware of like what other people like what their needs are you know in in different moments i'm always on top of that stuff i, I thought about it before you say it but then also <laughs> it gets it gets overwhelming in a lot of play in a lot of stages um so that's something about music that allows you to kind of disconnect from that energy and, and get underneath it is like like you said yeah i think about that a lot like just kind of assuming that like freak is the perfect word like just just i don't know like dispelling considerations of any degree of like being palatable or any of that kind of stuff and just completely putting out like this kind of this kind of jagged maybe not necessarily but but just some kind of very raw expression of self that those who don't understand the value of it will perceive as being weird or you know I've played stuff before and had people like you know people are not going to understand a lot of that stuff but just disconnecting from that idea and understanding that they you know they're not in a position they haven't been in environments to open them up to that side of thinking and perceiving things so it's not even really their fault i mean maybe to a certain extent they're putting up a wall that that keeps them from um from appreciating that that's that's something in general that i feel like uh, i i just feel like society would benefit from people allowing themselves to like this idea of acceptance that we've talked about, like just accept what happens in the moment sonically and overall. Well, of course you can still have your, your perspectives and you know, the things that you prefer and the sounds that you connect with and these kind of, kind of you know, whatever you feel like your soul resonates with more, that's incredibly valid. Not to say that everyone needs to have this like, deep like openness to anything that happens but some degree of that some some balance of that and, and more of a presence of that i feel like would be like beneficial to the overall health of, of society and like the perception of how the value of art like whether or not something is i don't even know if enjoyable is the right word but like just allowing an experience to be that and not coming into it with preconceptions of what it should be yeah and some people it's really hard to wrap their minds around that because it's very paradoxical because when you try to conceptually think about it like it goes against itself over and over because how are you supposed to free something that's already free right because you just got to be free <laughs> so it's like um some people really have trouble like understanding that because they're trying to understand it but i feel it as like when i when I listen to like your music or something, like I think your music has, like when I've heard it before, like with Simon and stuff, it has so much movement, it has so much happening that it almost feels like a spiral at times. And it makes me wanna f personally like let go, like like completely like, I don't know, like do what's in that moment. And like, but sometimes I don't like, I'm afraid to like join into that collective energy where I just like scream or something because I'm like, can I scream? <laughs> Should I sc <laughs> like, is this a place where I can scream? <laughs> uh, I'm always asking myself that. And in the moments when I actually have allowed myself to be like that, like I haven't needed it from anybody else. I haven't needed acceptance. But I sometimes like I just want to be able to enter that stuff with other people because there's so much I could connect with with other people if I allowed myself to put down my walls and like fully experience parts of myself that I'm afraid to experience that are in other people that other people are like vibrating at. But it's like I don't want to open up the door to my own self creations sometimes. Sometimes it feels like, oh I'm gonna offend the person or people aren't gonna like me. And I think that goes back to my childhood too, because I was bullied a lot and like I was always afraid to be myself. So I was like, nobody's gonna like me. Yeah, that was kind of something that, that drew me to like music, instrumental music, specifically at least for myself and like improvisation is like that idea of like in becoming more mature, I realized that it, it, it is me and it's all deeply connected in this kind of circular, circular kind of way. But especially when I was younger, thinking about it, it was like the music and my 
expression and execution of it was almost a way to kind of like hide my identity or present it in some like esoteric way that would pr like protect me from people like mm, judging me or something like that. Like if, if I could get weirder with it and express it in like a more, I don't know, like so, some kind of unclear way, like put forward a thought, but not really articulate it because of the fact that music is such a conceptual kind of thing in general. There's, it's especially instrumental music because there's no, there's less of like a tangible thing to grab onto to understand where it's coming from. So yeah, that, that, it's interesting you bring that up. I haven't, I've rarely talked about that. That's kind of just one of those like, like unspoken things within myself that I've always known, but, and like I said, it's gotten, as I've become more attuned to myself, I have less to hide from, you know what I mean? And I don't care so much about what people say because it doesn't matter at the end of the day. That's sick. Oh. I was going to like respond to that. Um, I've, and I feel like we do the best service when we service ourselves. We can't service others if we're constantly compromising because we like don't want them to feel a certain type of way based on our expression. And like learning all of these things in music and um, developing as an artist, um, I realize more and more that the more that I can show up as full of myself as possible, the more I show others that they can do that for themselves. And it, be it becomes like a, a trickle down that everyone can be more accepting of their own expression and um yeah like even like all like this um expression that we're expressing now of like certain like apprehensions that we've had and the the things that the mind does that like creates all of these different layers that we can create to protect ourselves um ultimately um what i'm finding more is that the more that I allow whatever it is, the more protected I am because I am safe to be myself no matter what. And that gives others the ability to see that they're safe as well. So I think the, the best service that we can do is allowing ourselves to be as free as possible. Um, and I think I'm learning that more and more as I go through. Yeah, it's really funny to me, um, like, when I hear you guys are saying um, how almost, like, things work in, like, opposites. Like, the things that you think are going to make you feel protected end up making you, like, exposed. But, like, in a very, like, deeply sad way, where it's, like, when you're completely exposed, you end up feeling protected because you gain, like, an internal sense of protection where it's, like, it's okay for me to actually be exposed. I didn't have to be afraid of being exposed and out in the open and like even like the darker things or like the things that like you felt hurtful towards somebody it was like once I fully opened myself up to that it was like there's a there's a shift it's like suddenly you can accept yourself mm -hmm. and you don't search for somebody else to accept you mm -hmm. but also like with what you were saying Phil um it was something that came to my mind where you kind of said like the opposite of what I think I experienced when I was younger, which is like when I was playing when I was younger and improvising, I was like very insecure. It actually carried like a very, it was like I was trying to run away from the sensation of how other people judged me, but I couldn't get away from it because I was still like portraying the, or seeing the judgment in other people's eyes because I hadn't like faced it in myself. So when I would improvise, I would always think like, would always be like running away from like the moment. I would always be like running away from hearing the notes I was playing. Like, it was like, I don't know what I was looking for, but it never felt right. It never actually felt good. Um, yeah. And I felt that too, like the abstract thing where it's like you almost feel like protected against like when you're like abstract because it's like, well, nobody can say what, what I'm supposed to be doing now because 
you don't even understand it. <laughs> like, you don't even know what I'm doing. Like, and I don't really know what I'm doing too much either, but like, it feels like freaky. It feels like, yeah, it's like you can't say anything about it. And I have felt that too. And it's, it's a good feeling actually. It's like, you kind of feel like justified and it makes the other person feel justified too in a way. Like when you look at that person and they start releasing more, it feels like good. You're both like kind of like letting yourselves be like weird and stuff i felt that like music is a great like place i just think of like the low notes and like playing like weird rhythms and stuff like it reminds me of that like weirdness right right yeah do you guys have any like specific visions or mm, realities that you that you hope to manifest through the music and art or, or in general or do you think about things in more of like a kind of stream of stream of life, I guess it's a better way to say than stream of consciousness, but yeah. I mean, personally for me, um, both in the, in the art and like myself, just reopening the doors for the things that I never wanted to look at, like the darker parts of myself have felt truly liberating recently. And like a whole different reality than I, d I wanted to look at. But like when I open up the darker parts and all the desires, it's like suddenly a whole part of me feels like it has space for new energy because it let out these ones that were like clenched in its um, deeper core and it wasn't letting go of. And now it's like it has more space. The air has been like, like you have air to breathe now, whereas like before you were like in a closed area where like the air was just being recycled and you didn't have that much so that's that's where i'm currently at and i want to it's been like that for a few years like every time i open that door it's just more and more liberating but i'm always afraid to open the door i keep on closing it myself yeah yeah it's kind of like another one of those paradoxes like you have to you have to accept the darkness in order to to process and overcome it in some way because if you hide from it it'll fester in places that you're not connected to. Yeah. Um, for me, um, I think liberation is a very, like, like theme, is, is a theme for me as well, as far as my music and the goals that I want to achieve when I'm expressing or, this is funny to say, goal, you know, like it's just expression, but um, I think ultimately, like I write all these songs and they all come from these sentiments of like liberation and freedom and like no bondage and like freedom from suffering. And I think all of those themes kind of like intermingle with everything that I do in life and um, all that I experience. And I hope that when I express in music that I'm allowing that liberation to come forth um, to give others the gift of liberation. And that's what I, I hope to achieve. And it may change. Um, I like the way you put it, that that is like a, what you're experiencing now. Um, I'm also not attached to how I feel now because in the future I may be different and I may be going through a different transition. Um, but for right now, the biggest theme for me is liberation and liberating all of my people. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Um, yeah, thank you guys so much for, for sharing that really profound stuff. Uh, I maybe should have asked this at the top of the, the interview, but uh, I'm curious, how did, how did you guys connect? Um, oh. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, I mean, I, I still remember that, to be honest. I think I remember more than Banaya because it was a big shift um, day for me. At the park? Yeah. I don't know if this is something we can disclose on the radio, but... No, you can um, say anything. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, we were at Gunnels Park, like, for this thing, and I came because of, like, my other friend who invited me. Um, I met Banaya before, and 
it was like this random guy was there and he was like i mean this is my perspective i think benaya had a better idea of what was happening but i honestly didn't know he came and he was like yo i got this like 24 acre land up in homestead it was like everybody come and and so Isaiah was like, oh, yeah, let's go. And I was kind of like, yeah, uh, you know, like, what the heck? <laughs> I don't know, even, like, I don't know what else I'm going to be doing right now. Like, I want to free myself. I felt too many walls that day. So I was like, yeah, let me get out of this. Like, let me go somewhere I don't even know where I'm going. And, like, and so Benaya was there. And he was like, I was, Isaiah was like, nah, you can't get a ride with me. We're, like, packed. Um, and he was also going somewhere. And so Benaya was there, and I was like, who's this guy? Like, I've, I've seen him before. I didn't really know, but. I went with him, and he was like, yo, I got these mushrooms. <laughs> and, then, and I was like, cool, I haven't really taken mushrooms. I was like, yeah, let me have some. He was just a very open person. Like, he was just very, like, just like, we were there. And it was really beautiful. Like, we just, we went on this drove with this one, like, jazz, Tao Cohen. Mm. And it was like, um, yeah. yeah, it was like crazy. It was like beautiful. And then we went to beautiful the, conversation on the way. Oh there, yeah, like. yeah, and then yeah, we went to this place and it was just like whole different experience and very free. Oh my god, I remember Isaiah. Oh my god, I just remember this vibration. Like Isaiah and stuff were like playing. They were like playing this like house like like um house like spiritual music kind of thing like forest like jungle, and like Isaiah was playing guitar, and I was like on shrooms right, and he was like, "Yo, like Aiden, come." Like, I just walked up to him, and he was like, yo, take the guitar. He just gave me the guitar. I was like, what do I do with this? Like, all these people are dancing to jungle music. Like, you want me to play? You know how I play? Like, I'm like, <laughs> like I'm going to play. Like, like, what am I going to play over this? And so I just, like, sat there, and I was, like, <sighs> like falling and, like, just, like, playing the guitar. And I don't, I don't know. It was a strange, funny vibration. And then, like, after, like, I don't know how long, like, I was looking around, and Isaiah comes out of nowhere. He's like, nice, man. He takes the guitar. I'm like okay i'm out like good <laughs> like <laughs> like but it seemed like some people liked it but yeah then we just went back and it was very beautiful yeah um we just had like the most like like solemn conversation it was like i was like what is life like wh what is happening like why is this happening why do i feel these feelings and but i was like he was just like so solemn he was like it is what it is bro <laughs> <laughs> Because I don't have any answers. Like, yeah, no. like, I don't ever have any answers. Like, all I have is more questions. So, yeah, you, you were asking me, you know, you were asking me all these questions. You're like introspecting. I was like, like, I didn't even know, like, I didn't, I didn't know how to take those questions and like introspect with myself. Like, all you were doing was raising a question. Yeah. You had no answers. And yeah. I was like, <laughs> what, what do I do with like what do who, I do what who is, is like, I like who, oh yeah it was just like who is I who is I am I I like oh, yeah. I remember that conversation bro I remember we were literally like so we're both I like, we were like, <laughs> so, but then I would be like but no bro it doesn't like it would be like, it would be like a constant sense. circle and we were like driving so slow it was like a two hour drive home <laughs> it's yeah. like that's crazy yeah. Well, and then we started playing music after that yeah then we that we didn't even we didn't even like play music we didn't even like really like connect nah, in that way we not just that, not after that, that though then like i started teaching benai like odd time signatures and stuff i was like super into it so dope so dope how it started mm -hmm. made a like i made the song called in between that's like nine and it's really cool it's like yeah. in between Nice, nice. What's your, what's your experience with with odd time signatures? Like, did you have to be really, did you have to work really hard and focused in order to, to develop that kind of natural understanding of it, or did you always feel like you're kind of connected to it? At least for myself personally, I feel like I had to go through, like, kind of like a relearning period where like music was just I had to be like thinking about everything so much more than I did leading up to that because you know you get used to four and three and the connection of those and it starts to feel really natural at least for me when i introduce those those odd time signatures although at the end of the day it, it really is just instead of even groupings of two or even groupings of three you have mixed groupings of twos and threes so it's like when you conceive of it in that way at least from my perspective it gets more approachable because it's not like 
seven versus nine versus versus five versus it's all just like combinations of twos and threes basically but yeah i guess i'm just i'm just curious about that I, i'd like to give an answer before aiden um because my perspective was totally like like it was very hard for me to break through i really mm. wonder what your perspective um, was <laughs> <laughs> like mm. beginning with aiden in the beginning and he was teaching me all these odd times I had no idea what I was doing. Like, I, I, I still don't have any idea what I'm doing. Like, but, like, you know, Aiden's very patient. And he's, like, he really wants me to learn his songs. And I really want to learn them as well. So I stayed patient. And I remember it, it was, like, I had to, like, find a way to shut my mind off in a way because when my mind was on that's when I couldn't like figure it out I'm just like trying to think my way into learning the music but when I'm when the breakthrough came was when like you know we just sang it a bunch of times and I was able to feel the music more than like understanding the timing of it and um still to this day like I I feel like I don't really have the timing down um, still learning these odd times, and it's very new for me because I, I didn't I didn't train classically or anything. I didn't go to school, um, but uh, there's this certain feeling that like I can feel seven now, or mm. I can feel what nine feels like. I can feel what five feels like, and um, it, it came after like just like enough like like resisting until there was like I had to like surrender the resisting like there was so much resistance like it felt very frustrating for me like until like there's just a breakthrough and then now I just feel it like it feels like this and it feels good you know you um also brought back memories um I remember um we went through like this almost like training process I could say where I was like almost training Benaya and training myself and I just remembered that you would come over and we would spend so much time almost like training like intuitive training not conceptual training mm-hmm. it would be like we wouldn't think we're, we're playing in seven I'm not even telling you we're playing in seven mm-hmm. like <laughs> like um and I would change stuff so often and I would like be like completely like changing the whole dynamic like every left and right that it would like make our heads kind of like learn how to feel stuff because like I mean, like, I didn't even tell Benaya, but, like, the song It's All Circles, one of my songs is, like, in 15-8, and then it goes to, like, 14-8, and it just keeps on repeating back and forth, but, like, um, he got it at the time that we were doing it. Now he did Now I think, like, it's, like, reintegrating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, um, but, like, I just remembered those memories. How we, I would sit, and I would have a hi-hat for my foot while I was playing guitar and the, the kick drum, and then I would, like, be doing the rhythms, and we'd, like, sing it back, and we would, like sing it together like sing the melodies together without you know it'd be like an odd time signature and stuff wow that's incredible yeah yeah i still yeah i I, yeah that makes me want to spend some time with you guys working on that (laughs) stuff because i feel like i have a lot of things still to unlock with that but yeah it's like it's an interesting thing you know because it's in some ways it's almost easier to lock in when when you don't know what the hell's going on then once you start to understand it more, gears are turning and sometimes they can get like stuck. Um, but then also I, I definitely connect with what you mentioned of that kind of like that tipping or boiling point where it's like everything's going and you're trying to think about it. And then at a certain point, it's just like, I just, I can't even do this shit anymore. Like, and then just like, <laughs> and that's the point when you and get then it. it just <laughs> yeah. connects somehow. That's what it works for me. Yeah. yeah, it's really interesting. Yeah. And then for me, just trying to think about like time from a more fluid way and not not always thinking about stuff like in terms of like I don't even know how best to articulate it but not thinking like purely from the time signature perspective but more so thinking like you know if you take an amount of time from a start to an end point you can divide that in any kind of way whether it be even or uneven and whatever the groupings are within that time and then just you know also experimenting with like different layers of timing and stuff like the relationships between different pulses and the areas where 
you know, a lot of it is, is mathematics and then a lot of it is also intuition, like the kind of dichotomy of those two things. But, um, yeah, just exploring that, that's something like with Simon that's been really, yeah, that's pushed me to that even more so is cause he doesn't, he doesn't think about any of that time signature stuff. We actually were speaking the other day and he was talking about wanting to kind of shift things and, and like go into that for a little bit of like really thinking about stuff from, from that more standard, I guess you could say approach to it rather than trying to approach things in like a purely uh, intuitive manner. Um, so I'm curious to see how, how that manifests for him. Cause of course in his, in his journey, it's been, it's been very like fluid and um, not thinking about all that stuff very much and that um, I'm super grateful personally for having those experiences because it, yeah, it just helped to, to open myself up more and to think about, you know, these ideas as they come up, they can be very natural and like connected to a phrase more so than any kind of, like the rhythm is something in and of itself, but then the phrase, the story is, is so deeply connected to it that you almost kind of have to prioritize it, but then sometimes purely rhythmic conceptions can be a phrase. So it's like a really difficult like very vast thing to 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 think about but yeah that's like know, yeah that's like the flow to me also like that bigger um picture like when you're completely in the flow it's like it all connects like and sometimes it's conceptual sometimes you can be like i totally have this like i feel like you might relate like where you like play something and you're like oh yeah like you like grasp the feeling and then you recognize that was a feeling and you're in this state where you're kind of witnessing but at the same time like conceptualizing and then there's other states where it's like you're in a flow and you completely intuitively like feel the the weird feeling and you don't even think that you did it. Like it just like you, I don't know how to explain. There's a lot of different states. I also want to answer what you said because um, for me, like odd time signatures came like intuitively, mm. weirdly. Um, I think, I mean, Benaya is like, People that come to play my original music, <laughs> they're like, bro, like, what is this? Like, <laughs> like when you look at the sheet, it's like, what is this? Like, this is like, there's a time signature every measure. Like, you know, like, like, well, how are we supposed to play this? And it's like, for me, it's literally not that. Like, I'm literally, it's intuitive. Like, they each have their own phrase and how they all go together makes like this bigger number, or this bigger picture that like, describes the feeling like it's all circles when i started thinking it's one of those songs i thought a lot about conceptually and it does like a three bar phrase and i was thinking about how f three feels like a circle in a exactly. way even though i think about that a lot yeah i think about that it's a lot. like you can't make the circle out of four or two but like three feels like i don't know how to explain it just doesn't have a even the even is an odd number like it's in the middle exactly and yeah, like stuff like that. It felt like intuitive. Like that's why the song felt like circles to me. Um, but like when it first started, the journey with all times interest with the journey to like self-expression too. It's like around that time I said that like COVID. I just like um, I was like, I just put on a metronome in seven, and I didn't think. And then, I don't know. Like at some point, like it just started becoming really natural. I don't know what the hell happened, but. I was doing that for days. I found it really beautiful to play in seven and five and, and stuff. And I would just not think at all. And I would sometimes not even be playing in seven, but it was like, I had this, like this standpoint, in which I could like create things. And I don't know. It was just really beautiful creations at the time. It felt super heartwarming. And it just continued like that until the point where I would be like, I know I'm playing in seven and I don't know why. And then I would start understanding why in the different divisions but that came later. It didn't start, I guess. Like it really started with like intuition and stuff. And it was like, it's where it's gone from there. All my music, I haven't thought about it. When I do, it's really frustrating. I don't like it. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah, it's interesting. I'm curious too, in the way that you approach building phrases and melody, harmony, do you feel like you think from like more so of the phrase melody perspective of following a certain shape or a certain arc or do you approach it more from kind of 
the rhythmic perspective, even though there's obviously connection between the two, they, they're, they're one and the same to a certain extent. But I guess just for myself personally, I've always been so like deeply connected to like rhythmic conceptions, purely rhythmic conceptions and not, and, and seeing melody within what might more from a more standard perspective be considered purely rhythmic or purely percussive, like seeing the melody within that. And, so, but at the same time, it's still, it is still about the phrase. It's about the, what that idea is that you put forward. They're so connected, but and yeah, just, I'm curious, like how you've thought about that stuff, both of you guys. Um, I've seen like with your playing, your playing has inspired me, um, because like, I feel a self of mine that's like deeply connected to that kind of rhythm. But for some reason, even though I have so many odd time signatures in all my music, I'm really more connected to harmony and melody. Um, and the time signatures come as this kind of like, they're less rhythmic in the sense of like, do, 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 do. It's like more like rhythmic in the sense of like, I'm taking a beat away mm. or I'm like, I don't know how to describe. It's more like rhythmic in this different sense that almost works together with harmony. It's like the the times at which you shift the harmony rather than like rhythms themselves, like rhythms that make you dance. More like a a stamp on when you're like changing mm -hmm. certain to different like worlds. And yeah, I guess I've been more connected to like melody and and harmony. They've they've really hit me. But rhythm has also been another thing, like actually using rhythm in that way, I've felt that self. And both of them sometimes work together at times. Like that day I was saying about Stormy and stuff, why it felt so beautiful, like musically, especially is because both of those things were interacting that day, like rhythm, harmony, and melody, like really, like, really, like every side of them was hitting. And that felt like amazing. Like it felt really freeing. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Um, yeah, so I guess to, to, to close things out, I, I want to give you guys the, the floor in terms of projects, uh, things that you're working on that you want to point the, the, the listeners and, and viewers to, you know, yeah, anything that you want to point the listeners to in terms of, yeah, stuff that you guys are, are working on um, in any sphere. It doesn't even have to be purely musical. Even if you have a, a message or a thought that you want to share, you particularly think is important to share. Or if you have nothing to say, then like a, any engagement is valid, basically. <laughs> cool. <laughs> <laughs> like I've been going first too much, but I do have a lot on my mind right now. A lot of stuff is like popping up, but um, yeah, I mean, like these are some like manifestations, I guess I've been like dwelling on, which is uh, I have a movie concept I want to create a movie me and Benaya, um two movies in which the music I've created has a certain roadmap in which describes like my life and life in general to the second movie where it's more like almost alien and consciousness is exploring. I want to make a movie with with the album. I want to make like there's a lot of albums I'm probably going to be releasing in maybe the next coming coming years um for sure like the music has to come out. I have so many songs and they really hit a lot of areas. For me um I'm working on recording a lot of my songs. I have one song that's out on Spotify. It's called Don't Be Deceived. Um, so that's available for any listener to go check out. It's always in the link in my bio on Instagram. Um, but other than that, I've just been working on recording a lot of my music and working with artists that I feel flows with my sound the best. Um, and I just really like to work on uh, conceptualizing and creating the album um, and then moving forward from there I'm really um, wanting to dive into uh, like music videos animated videos and uh, lyric videos and other ways of expressing um, in the uh, video realm or uh, so uh, that's some of the things that I've been working on and I will continue to be working on um, but just like recording the album basically
Amazing. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. And for any of the, the viewers that want to connect with you guys, uh, your Instagram's Aiden Finn J, correct? So A I D A N F I N N J. And then your Instagram is Benaya Music, right? Yeah, Benaya Music, B E N I Y A H. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, I feel like there's so many other pockets that we could we could delve into. So maybe we'll try to, to reconnect in the future for another similar kind of thing. It's it's really been very uh, profound to speak with you guys and kind of try to explore some of these different ideas and, and conceptions. Um, uh, yeah, thank you. And thank you again for, for sharing your music as well. It was incredibly beautiful. I'm very excited to, to listen back to it um, and looking forward to all the, the creations that you guys uh, put out from this point. Um, yeah, huge honor, huge, huge honor. Thank you guys again so much. Um, this has been uh, an installment of The Pocket um, program exploring different connections between music and culture and life, and especially connected to, to improvised music, but, but not necessarily. Um, and yeah, opening up into these, these live programs recently, which has been really amazing. Uh, in the past, most of, of the interview stuff that I did was with more you know, older, established, quote unquote, artists that, you know, I, I aren't, aren't so much active. So it's interesting, it's really interesting and, and um, beautiful to, to be able to connect in this, this sense, of, you know, as this stuff is happening and kind of, you know, document it in that way. Um, yeah, so, so yeah, just, just deep gratitude on my end. Uh, I hope everyone uh, enjoyed the program or um, took something from it. Um, one more time, it's Aiden Finn Benaya. That's Aiden Finn J uh, on Instagram. Benaya Music on Instagram. Check out all the stuff they they have out. Uh, Aiden didn't mention this in passing, but he's also part of this incredible group, Himalayan Salt. Um, so check out their music. Um, go see them live. Go see all these guys live if you can. Um, and I think that's uh, that's going to conclude the program. I'm Goon Green. It's been an honor to host things. Aiden Finn, Benign Music, and I will be back with you guys uh, in September because I'm stepping out of town for a while. So I will see all of you viewers again uh, in September. And uh, in my absence, I hope you all have a wonderful August. Uh, signing off. Thank you. Thank you.